You've probably heard that the dodo is extinct. We even have the phrase, as dead as the dodo. You've maybe even heard it happen because humans showed up and ruined everything. But what if I told you that long after the dodo vanished, its absence almost took a tree species along with it, and that some very unlikely heroes were thrown in to help? Let's rewind to the 1970s. The place is Mauritius, a lush tropical island in the Indian Ocean. At that time, one particular native tree, the Tambalakak, was in serious trouble. Once widespread, only a handful of these trees were left standing. And worse, they were all old, all over 300 years old. They still dropped seeds every year, but no matter how carefully scientists tried to grow them, nothing sprouted, not one seedling. The species had quietly stopped reproducing centuries ago. Enter Stanley Temple, an ecologist from the University of Wisconsin. When he heard about this mystery, he became obsessed with figuring it out. Why weren't the seeds growing? Despite their age, the trees looked healthy enough to produce viable fruit. And the fruit they were producing, a large fleshy fruit with a hard stony core, something similar to an avocado, seemed healthy. Temple thought, maybe the issue wasn't with the seeds, but with how they were processed in the wild. Something in the environment had changed, he suspected. Around the same time all the existing trees had sprouted, about 300 years earlier. That's when it hit him. 300 years ago is also when the dodo went extinct. Could it be that this big, awkward bird, long gone from the island, had once played a crucial role in helping Tambalakak seeds germinate? There was reason to think so. One of the few things we know about dodos is that they ate fruit and seeds, and fossilized seeds of the Tambalakak tree had been found alongside dodo remains. Temple figured the dodo may have been acting as nature's gardener, swallowing the fruit, grinding the seeds in its gizzard, and pooping them out ready to sprout. Like many birds, dodos would have swallowed stones to help with digestion. These stones sitting in the gizzard acted like internal grit, rubbing and scraping against hard food like seeds. But without dodos, no seed grinding, no sprouting, no new trees. Temple wanted to test his theory, but of course he didn't have a dodo, so he got creative. He turned to a bird that people often call as dumb as a dodo, the turkey. Yes, turkeys, the same ones that get eaten at Christmas and Thanksgiving about the same size as the dodo and also has a strong gizzard. Temple tried to feed the Tambalakak fruit to his specially imported turkeys, but they wouldn't eat it, so he tried feeding them just the seed. And guess what? It worked. The seeds made it through the turkeys' digestive systems, their tough outer shells had been worn down just enough, and when planted, they sprouted. The first new Tambalakak saplings seen in 300 years. An endemic species saved from extinction. Thanks to some unconventional thinking, Temple saved the Tambalakak tree from extinction. In doing so, he showed that the effects of human-caused extinctions in the far past are still causing extinctions today. Based on this experiment, botanists learned how to manually scarify the Tambalakak seeds to allow them to germinate, meaning the turkeys were no longer required. Sadly, despite playing a key role in saving an entire species from extinction, at the retirement dinner for the Tambalakak turkeys, they were the main course. Humans manually propagating a seed, being the only thing preventing that species from becoming extinct, seems problematic though. The species then has no means of surviving in the wild, which begs the question, should a suitable species be introduced to Mauritius as proxy for the dodo? Not just to save the Tambalakak tree from extinction in the wild, but to restore all the interactions the dodo had with its ecosystem, and to restore biodiversity. Mauritius actually has a history of success in doing this for other species, which I discuss in the video on screen if you want to check that out. Turkeys don't seem like the perfect proxy for the dodo. Even though they saved the Tambalakak tree from extinction, they needed some convincing to eat the seeds in the first place, only doing so when the seeds were removed from the fruit. But just as Mauritius trialed multiple tortoise species to see which species best filled the niche of the extinct Mauritian giant tortoises, perhaps the same could be done with some large ground-dwelling birds as potential proxies for the dodo. So before we look at what species could be trialled as proxy for the dodo, we need to first look at the ecology of the dodo. The dodo was a ground-dwelling, flightless bird weighing between 10 to 15 kilos that we believe was largely frugivorous, meaning it mainly ate fruit, but also seeds, nuts, bulbs and even small animals, and of course was adapted to the tropical climate of Mauritius, so we need birds with a similar ecology. And just to add, any introduction like this should first be done in a trial setting to prove the species will definitely benefit native biodiversity. Consider the dwarf cassowary, 
the smallest of the living cassowary species, though larger than dodos, weighing around 22 kg or 48 pounds. It is mainly a frugivore, but like the dodo, will also consume other plant matter and even small animals like invertebrates or whatever else they find while foraging. It's also flightless, so there's no risk of it going to any other islands, and is native to Papua New Guinea, which like Mauritius, is tropical. Another potential proxy is the great Curaçao. Though Curaçaos are not fully flightless, they spend most of their time on the ground foraging for fruit and insects, and are only capable of short bursts of flight. They're only about half the weight of a dodo, maxing out around 5 kilos or 11 pounds, and are native to the tropics of Mexico, so may be a suitable proxy. I'd be interested to hear any suggestions you guys have for a dodo proxy. The Tambalacoc tree is not the only tree species that has been struggling since the extinction of its propagator. In fact, many tree species have been struggling and largely now rely on humans to propagate them due to the extinction of the megafauna the trees co-evolved with. In South America, species like Gormortega, the Chilean palm and the monkey puzzle tree now survive only in small, fragmented populations with low genetic diversity. Studies show that this is likely due to the loss of the continent's elephantids around 12,000 years ago. The elephantids fed on the tree's fruit, then pooped the seeds out all over the landscape, thus allowing the trees to spread over vast areas and mix genetics. The fruit of these struggling trees is specifically adapted to be fed on and distributed by megafauna, but now, sadly these species mainly only survive through the fruit that falls from the mother tree and germinates underneath her. Similar situations can be seen in Central and North America, with species like the avocado tree and the Joshua tree, which are struggling in the wild without any megafauna to distribute them. The struggle of these species has brought on the suggestion by many ecologists to reintroduce elephantids and other megafauna as proxies for the lost American megafauna to restore ecosystem function and biodiversity. Which may sound crazy, but if you want to hear why it's not, you should definitely check out the video on screen now. In short, extinctions cause extinctions, as can be seen with the loss of the dodo and the subsequent struggle of the tambalacoc tree. Humans have been causing extinctions for tens of thousands of years now, and it's time we try and undo as much of that damage as possible. The only way to do that is by restoring biodiversity and ecosystem function wherever possible. This is done by expanding our wild spaces and reintroducing lost species wherever possible. This practice, known as rewilding, has proved to be an incredible tool for nature conservation in recent years. Beavers have been reintroduced across Europe and are not just restoring biodiversity, they are reducing the frequency and intensity of floods and wildfires and even sequestering carbon. Where bison have been reintroduced in Romania, the land now sequesters 10 times the amount of carbon it did before their reintroduction. Wild horses, cattle and other herbivores in Iberia, amongst other areas, are reducing the frequency and intensity of wildfires, a growing problem in our changing climate. Rewilding is the greatest tool we have in restoring our natural world, and we need to implement it wherever possible, while there's still time. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel to help it grow, and maybe even check out another video. Thank you, as always, for watching.